it's just you've heard two names in particular and Aaliyah Boston and Caitlin Clark, right? You've heard their names for the last few seasons, to be quite honest. I mean, they are stars and they're both so crucial to their teams. So I think more than anything, they're obviously not going to guard each other. You know, I mean, Caitlin might find Aaliyah inside the paint or something like that. I don't know if South Carolina is going to switch. Who knows? But I think the opportunity to watch those two players lead their teams and those two players be great and step up for their teams. Like for me as an analyst, it is always my favorite thing when the best play their best. So like, that's just what I'm excited for. I think these are two players that are built for this moment. Um, And then also two great teams. I know South Carolina fans, as they call them, have been waiting for this moment since last year when they thought they were going to play Iowa, but now they do get this matchup. And that's my next question is what a lot of South Carolina fans ask is how do you match up against South Carolina, their length plus their depth? I mean, what do you think Iowa's game plan is? I, I will. I think Iowa's game plan is going to start with trying to keep the rebounding margin as close as possible. And I know so many teams have said that, but why it's important for Iowa in particular is because they're so good in transition. So Caitlin Clark with her transition offense and finding her shooters early, or even her pulling some of those logo threes and hitting Monica Sonano on the run, like some of those early transition opportunities were going to be huge for Iowa because when you're in transition – you're not setting up against South Carolina's length on the defensive end. So any opportunity that they can get to not face South Carolina in half court defense, because you've seen the way South Carolina defends people. I mean, they've got the best defense in the country for a reason. They have so much length. They have so much athleticism, so much mobility um, to defend shots and contest shots. So I think for Iowa, Getting the defensive rebound, one, because you want to limit South Carolina's offensive rebounding opportunities and second chance points, but two, their transition offense. Like if you can score on South Carolina before they're set up, that's huge, even if it's just stealing a couple points here and there. Um, So I I think that it's really hard to face South Carolina's length, and no team, unless you've played South Carolina, can even compare. There's just no comparison. Like you cannot compare a team to South Carolina. South Carolina is the only comparison. So going up against that length is really tough. How does South Carolina try and slow down Caitlin Clark? I mean, is she going to go for 40 on Friday? You know, she could go for 40. And and that's the thing is, you know, she has had big performances and her team has fallen short still sometimes. So I think for any opponent, it's like, listen, you just want to make life as hard as possible for Caitlin. Like if she goes 40, but it's an inefficient 40 and there aren't the easy transition layups off of steals that she gets, or even just driving to the basket and getting layups or wide open threes, right? Like if she gets 40, you want to make it the most difficult 40 points, all sidesteps, all logo threes, all off of the bounce, all contested. And you can live with that. Um, So, I, I mean, I think South Carolina, the thing about South Carolina is they have, multiple options on the defensive end of players that have proven that they can play one-on-one defense with their length, their mobility, their athleticism. You know, I mean, they just, Caitlin Clark, even if she figures one out, South Carolina has another player like, okay, your turn, go guard her. Like, okay, Brie Beal, you start. All right, Zaya Cook, you next. Okay, let's try Letitia and me here, right? Like there are so many players that can, can have a legitimate shot at just giving her a hard time, right? Even if she scores, you can't hang your head because she's a phenomenal player. She's the player of the year for a reason. She's such a dynamic score. You just want to make life as hard on her as possible. Who do you think some of the players are that normally aren't the big players, but who will need to have a big game? Who you think, if they have a big game, then their team has a shot? Yeah, I think, you know, you think about the Robins on the team, right? The, the players like Zaya Cook, who can just light you up and and be such a tough scorer. Um, and and that's huge. If they're doubling in on a Liam Boston, Zaya's got to be able to catch the ball, hit that one dribble pull up and make them pay for that late closeout on her, right? Or even if, say, they go triangle in two and she's got the ball in her hand, she might have to make a couple of tough shots to maybe get them out of that defense, Um Caitlin's right-hand woman has been Monica Sinano on the inside. Just, you know, the, she doesn't dribble. She doesn't have to dribble the basketball, which is important against South Carolina's size because if you take a dribble, they could set up their block shots. They could set up for those blocks. So the right-hand women on both sides, the Robins, so to speak, they have to play well. But then you also think about, like, for, you know, for South Carolina coming off the bench, Camila Cardoso could be the X factor coming off of the bench. You know, 
Iowa brings in Hannah Stolke off the bench from that post position. Camilla has so much more size over Hannah Stolke, a little bit more experience over Hannah Stolke as well. So she could be huge. 